I'm going to go ahead with the meeting beginning ritual now. Chili. Nian Shao Tuo Tang. Sanja Sanji Gong Yi Ji Gong. Zai Ji Gong. San Ji Gong. Sanja Go with the Chuan Shi Ji Gong. Kai Ban Yi Ji Gong. Ching Tuo Xia. Please be seated. So let me get to the Q and A. So here's a question that was asked: What is the difference between Tu and Di? These are two Chinese characters. They're both translated as Earth. So the question is: Why is it always Tu in the five elements, and why? But it's always Di in the if they're both Earth. Should they not be interchangeable? So the answer is that. Uh, they are both translated to the same word in English. Oftentimes, that's the case. So the assumption may be that they mean the same thing, but they actually do not. So Earth, the English word itself, has multiple meaning, and in Chinese, in Mandarin, happens to be two two different characters to depict those different meanings, different definitions. And let me explain. Let's break them out. So. In the five elements, which I'll, I'll go into in more detail, this is one of the five elements. Tu, tu, is the、uh, pinyin. That's the romanization. So the meaning is is earth. Yes, but it's earth in the context of sand and mud, the soil, the soil in the ground, the substance of the stuff beneath your feet. So that is why it's one of the five elements. So water is another one of the five elements,、um, but it is、um, uh, water is an element because that's what you find in the ocean, that's what you find in the lake, in the river, etc. Fire is another one of the five elements. That's what you find when you have when you build a, a campfire, when you have a pyre. That's what that's the elements present in that. So the soil, the sand, the mud, the rocks, the pebbles. That's what you find. In the ground, so the ground—that's D. That's where the other one,、uh, the context where the other one is, and the pinion is EI. So the meaning is Earth in the context of the world or the planet that we all live on. So the context is different, even though the word is the same. So you can, so as a distinction, you can scoop up, scoop up Earth with your hand. But you cannot scoop up the planet. And Earth, the soil, is what Earth, the planet, is made up of. They are certainly not the same. So that's that's why. Now let's take a look at the way these characters are used. Here are the five elements. So in spoken Mandarin, usually.、Uh, Chinese people have a specific way to talk about them. They usually go Jin, which is over here, middle. Mu, that's wood over here. Sui, convention、uh, dictates that we go in this order. Sui is water,、uh, so you can see that it's blue in color.、Um, Huo over here, fire, and then lastly Tu. So it goes in sort of a strange order: Jin, Mu, Sui, Huo, Tu, like that.、Uh, the coloring scheme in this particular diagram、uh, illustrates is related to the meaning. So fire is is the red color, Tu, earth is the orange color, Mu, because of trees, wood, and Sui, of course, blue, water, Jin, sort of a steel gray. Now. The significance of the lines and the positioning、uh, bears talking about as well. Altogether, the five elements are known as Wu Xing. So Wu is simply Mandarin for the for the number five. Xing has Xing in this context has no real English equivalent. We can approximate it with a whole bunch of different words. So first of all, let me go through the pronunciation. 
Wuxing, XING. XING people have trouble with this. Uh, they'll say Jing, they'll say Xing. Okay, all of those are incorrect. So it actually sounds like SH. Wuxing. So Xing, the second character, as I mentioned, has no exact English equivalence. We translate it as five elements, but it's not really a five yeah, an element. It's more similar to like a phase or a process. Uh, maybe uh, out of all out of all three elements, phases, processes, probably phase is the closest one to the to the original Chinese meaning. So this is the order that I mentioned before. Jin Mu Sui Huo Tu. So here's the opinion. Jin Mu Sui. So S H U Y is actually more like U A Y Sui Huo Tu. Jin Mu Sui Huo Tu. And Sequentially, they are middle, wood, water, fire, and earth. So now I want to take you through the relationship between the different elements. Um, this is still being used today in Chinese medicine, in acupuncture, in in kung fu, in internal arts. Kung fu, they'll talk about the different different energies that interact in your body. They will also associate a specific uh, energy with a specific organ in the body. They apply it to food. Um, I would say that it's uh, in popular culture, people still talk about the five elements, but mostly as a uh, for chatting, mostly as just a, a sort of a conversation icebreaker. So it isn't really considered to be the same level as a scientific principle, uh, but it's something that people use all the time still to this very day in Chinese culture. So let's talk about the conquering cycle, or what I may call the overcoming cycle. Uh, what kids will say, you know, um, this beats that. Um, it's sort of like rock beats scissors, beats paper, beats rock. That type of thing. So let's take a look. And we can start anywhere. Um, but probably the easy, easiest way to start is with something familiar. Like, for instance, water is what we would use to put out fire. So this, this is pointing to what it conquers, what it overcomes, what it beats. Water overcomes fire. Fire, the heat of flames, very hot fire will melt metal. And in fact, when you create uh, weapons or tools or implements, vessels with uh, metal, that's what you have to do. You have to apply fire in the forge to the metal. So fire beats metal. And when you have metal, it is far stronger and sharper than wood. So you would use an ax to chop down a tree. And if you have uh, a sword or an axe made out of metal, and the defender has a wooden shield, well, that person is no match to you. So metal beats wood. Wood beats earth. The, it's pointing in this direction. And that is because, if you think about it, tree reaches out with the roots into soil. And it's sucking the nutrients from the soil. So it is overcoming, dominating, conquering the soil in that sense. So what about this? What about soil back to water? Well, if you think about a dam, if you think about constructions from Earth, uh, that is what we would use to dam up the water, to, uh, to guide the water to flow in different directions, or to hold it until we need it. So Earth has the ability to control water, so to speak. So this, that is the, the, the pentagram that you see here. The five-sided pentagram, um, the five-pointed star that you see is the conquering sequence, the overcoming sequence. So there is another sequence, the generating cycle. And in Chinese, it's more like 
this element gives birth to this other element. So it's going to be water, wood, fire, etc. Let's take a look from let's take a look graphically. So it is easiest if you were to go clockwise, and again you can you can you can do a uh, you can you can go from the easiest uh, to something that's maybe a little more difficult to comprehend. We began with water before water put now fire. So let's let's start with water causing wood to grow. So water begets wood. The water elements is beneficial to wood. And when you burn wood, you get flame. So wood gives birth to flames, to fire. And fire, once it has burnt out, you get ash. So fire gives rise to earth. And within the earth, you can dig <clears throat> for minerals, which later on become metals, different kinds of metals. So the earth gives rise to metal. And then metal giving rise to water. This is the one that people will trip over and say, what? What? You can't squeeze metal and get water out of it. So what are you talking about? This is where the ancient Chinese observed how water droplets form on the surface of metallic tools or weapons. Well, it's actually just the moisture in the air that will condense on the surface of a metal implement. Now the ancient Chinese did not really have the science to understand uh, moisture in the air, so to them it looks a lot like the wood has given birth or had, is beginning, giving rise to water that appears you know, spontaneously on the surface. So those are the five elements. So back to the question, in the Tao Te Ching, we always talk about heaven and earth. When we talk about heaven and earth, we're not talking about soil. We're talking about, when we say heaven, we mean the sky. So the counterpart to the sky isn't mud, isn't sand. The counterpart of the sky is the ground. So it's the setting, up through the sky, down through the ground. So in the Tao Te Ching, it always has to be the, the equivalent to ground or planet Earth. So, and that's D. And when we talk about the elements, we always have to talk about the substance of the stuff that's in a particular container. So it has to be metal, wood, water, fire, and earth. So it cannot be D, that's the ground, it has to be two. Just like it has to be water and not ocean in the five elements. So it's tougher to see that the earth um, is different just because the quirk of English is that they're the same word with the same letters, uh, but in fact, different definitions, different meaning. So that is my answer to the question of why earth is used in different ways in the five elements and the doubles. Let's go ahead and do the meeting and the ritual, everybody. Okay, everybody, we are done. Participate in the Tao meeting by joining us online. For information, go to Taoism.net forward slash Tao.